Morning all, it's a, it's a chilly Monday morning here, but still really, really beautiful. Let's see how. Such a really stunning day today. But I don't really want to be outside because it's really, really cold. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> my um, comments up a coffee this morning and my, my hubby bought me a new mug. How cute is that? It's a little local artist. You can actually see it's like a 3D. It's adorable it's a little cat i have a cat problem as we know a little cat sunning on the beach so cute little fat cat anyway so this morning's comment over coffee um is about why i encourage students to focus on doing questions and um <clears throat> going through questions before they're really comfortable with um, the theory and the understanding. So, you know, we, we, we instinctively feel that what we should be doing is going through the theory until we understand it and are comfortable with it. And then, you know, then we can, um, you know, then we can do the, the, the questions, you know, because once, whoops, once I understand something and once I'm comfortable with it, then it's going to be easier to use. <clears throat> and I want to, you know, I want to talk about that a little bit. Hold on. Sort my coffee out. Very important. <laughs> okay, so my point with this and the reason that I do this is because um, the reality is that if you focus on the theory alone, or if you focus on the theory uh, until you're comfortable with it, it's kind of like um, learning to drive a car by watching YouTube videos and having people explain to you how to drive a car and expecting that the very first time you get into the car, you can drive it yourself because you understand how to drive a car and you know the theory of driving a car. In reality, you only start learning to drive a car when you actually get behind the wheel, right? So once you get into the practical situation and you get into the environment and you get into, um, you know, into the challenges of balancing out, um, you know, your coordination and your balance and, 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 you know, the timing and all the rest of that and the, the sense of panic and anxiety, that's the first time that you actually start learning to drive a car. And all that theory goes out the window when you realize it's you and all the pedals and the gears and there's so much to do and you've got to do everything so quickly and react so quickly and what if I kill someone and all the anxiety, etc., etc. So you only start learning something when you use it. Okay. So when you're studying, what worries me or what I find is that students learn the theory but what they're not doing is actively applying it to the types of situations that they would be using that theory right so you don't use your theory um, you know or you don't use the knowledge and you don't use the content that you're studying in a theoretical way especially when you get to higher levels of studying the case study is the practical problem so what the examiners are trying to say is let's assume that um, you're the audit clerk or you're the accountant here, this is a situation that you face, what would you do? Knowing everything you know and all the stuff that you don't know because you're still studying, what would you do here, right? Now obviously, logistically, they can't do this face to face and they can't actually simulate the environment face to face. So the best way they can do it is write up a case study and go, imagine this is you, okay? How are you gonna solve it? A client walks in your door and says, I have this problem, what are you going to do about it, okay? So it's a practical issue. You can't sit down and say to the client, okay, so an asset is defined as, you know, this and this and this, and deferred tax works this way. The client's going, I don't care. Just tell me whether this thing is an asset or not. Tell me what I'm supposed to do with it. Or, you know, should I invest in this company? Or, you know, what would the benefits be of, 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 of saving money versus buying this thing? Or if I want to buy this huge asset, uh, should I buy it with cash? Or should I buy it with, you know, with taking out finance? Or should I issue shares to buy it? Like, what would the impact be? What are the good, the bad, and the ugly? Like, which is the best one for me kind of thing, right? So when, when you're learning your theory and when you're going through the stuff, um, when you focus predominantly on theory, what you're not doing is learning practically how to um, 
adapt the information, balance it out, and use it um, <clears throat> in different situations. You're not practicing, if I get in the situation, what does, how do I use my understanding of the definition of an asset? Like, what does that mean to me? How do I use that in this particular situation? Um, how do I discuss that with somebody? How do I go through that? How do I communicate it? Your knowledge is only as valuable as your ability to use it, right? If you can't use your knowledge, then it doesn't mean anything. You can't go into an exam and say, don't worry, I promise you I know this stuff. <laughs> That's not gonna work that way. So the reason that I focus on doing questions is because I want you to take a look at and put yourself in that position. And go, this is the type of problem. What type of information do I need? What am I missing? What type of skill do I need? What type of understanding do I need? And when you do that early enough in the semester or early enough in the year, then you have the time to go and research the answers and go and research the skills okay, that you need in order to be able to do stuff like that. Now, you know, with my static coaching students and with the stuff I do, we're going to be really careful about how you do questions because it's really easy to learn the answer and go, if I see this, then I must do that. If I see this, then I must do that. If I see this, then I must do that. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about actively putting yourself in that position and go, if a person came to me with this problem, what type of skills do I need in order to, to help them? I need communication skills. I need application skills. I need to understand, you know, what do I do with all my definitions and all my theory? What does it look like? What are they looking for from me? What, what, what is the outcome that they want here? And do I have the skills to be able to do that for them in any situation? Right? So, um, I don't want you learning questions off by heart. I don't want you doing questions and then doing them again quickly so that you can go, okay, now that I've just seen the solution, now that I've memorized the solution, let me go and answer it again quickly because now I remember the answer. I don't want you doing that. I want you actively putting yourself in that position. Now, the reality is when you look at questions and answers at the same time, your brain is not in that position, right? Your brain is your brain absorbs that and deals with it exactly the same way as theory, where it looks at it and goes, oh, that's interesting, oh, that's interesting, because it knows, your brain knows that the answer is right next to you, right? So your brain's going, oh, okay, well, you know, I don't really have to think about it and, and, and really, you know, question this, because, um, yeah, the answer's right there. So I'm just going to wait for the answer. I'm not actually going to think about it because it's just way too much energy and I'm tired anyway and, and you know, I don't know. So let's just wait and see what the answer is versus doing the question properly, right? Not having the answer with you means that your brain is forced to come up with something on its own and go, okay, this is really weird. What would I do here? There is no answer to just look at. So... I'm going to have to actually do some thinking. I'm going to have to think about what I would do in that situation. What don't I know? You kind of understand that and I kind of get that. And okay, I see where that would fit in, but wow, where does that come from? Or yeah, I remember doing that before, but like I don't really understand how I would use that here or like I've never seen that before. Then you can go back to that information. You can go back to the knowledge and go, okay, this is what I need to know on the basis of this is what I need to be able to do with this information. So, you know, some people say to me, oh, but Yvonne, it's, you know, it's not great advice because, you know, you're, you're, you're just learning solutions. But that's not what I'm saying, right? If you're learning solutions off by heart, then, you know, this, this message doesn't apply to you because that's not what I'm telling you to do, right? I'm not interested in you going, well, you know, I've done five questions on this topic and therefore the answer for the exam is going to be one of those five. That's not what I'm saying, okay? But especially when you get to higher levels, part of the challenge that you're going to face is the fact that you have all this knowledge and yet you're still struggling to use it because you've never actually got behind the wheel of a car and you've never said, okay, now I need, now I need to start learning how to use this information. You can't do this on your study leave, right? You can't do this uh, two weeks before the exam and expect that you're going to build the skills that you need in order to do this. Like, learning doesn't work that way. You need the time. You need the time to build those skills. You need the time to build the communication. You need the time to go, okay, what's going on here? Uh, why do I know that, but I'm not getting marks for it? Like, why do I know that? Like, I do know that. When I look at the solution, I go, yeah, yeah, I know that stuff. Okay, but why didn't you use it? Why weren't you aware that 
it fits in here. Why weren't you aware that this is how it works? Well, because you don't have the skill of application. You're still needing to build the skill of application. So, you know, I mean, there's there's a lot of stuff behind this, and I'm not going to go into all, you know, all the sort of theory behind learning, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, but I want you to think about as you're thinking about your studying. I really want you to think about the difference between watching people do stuff um, and doing it yourself. And for all the practical skills and for all the stuff that you've ever learned, how useful is it to watch someone else do something and then when you do it yourself, does it mean that it's automatically easy? When you watch someone else exercising and you go, oh, I can do that, you know, that movement is really easy, that's really simple, like, I can do that, that's great. Until you actually get on the floor and do it yourself and you realize your muscles don't work that way, <laughs> you don't stretch that way, you don't stretch that far, why not? Well, because you don't have the skill, you don't have the practice, your body hasn't prepared for that, you, you haven't actually gone through that. And until you get on the floor, and do the exercise yourself and work through that skill um, and work through that, you're not going to be able to do it. Okay? So I want you to think about that you know, where, when you're studying and when you're going, well, Yvonne, you know, I'm only going to start questions once I'm really comfortable with my stuff because otherwise um, you know, I don't know enough. I really want you to think about whether or not you start learning how to drive a car and stay that way you know, theoretically. Um, and whether or not you feel that the day that you jump into the car behind the wheel is going to be the day that you're perfectly able to drive. Or whether that's the starting point, the starting point of your ability to drive a car. So, I now have my awesome coffee and my awesome mug, and it's time for me to go and start working and um, answer all my millions of emails. And I hope that you have a fantastic day. And whatever your challenges are, whatever you're dealing with, I hope that you approach them with positivity. I hope that you approach other people with positivity. And I hope that you believe in yourself and your ability to, to work through whatever it is that you're going through at the moment. Enjoy.